Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. So, something just happened that I think is an excellent reminder of how myself and anyone who does tutorials, we're really just all human. When you see a tutorial, the final video is really not representative of what it took to research to get to that point. That final tutorial might look perfect with no bugs, no trial and error, no mistakes, nothing. But that is because whoever's teaching the tutorial, like myself, I've literally already made all of the mistakes and all of the trial and error during the research before making the final tutorial video. Just yesterday, I did a live stream and I actually encountered two bugs that were very tricky to solve. And someone wrote something in chat, something like, it's great to see how you struggle just like the rest of us. And yep, that is absolutely correct. I encounter bugs just like you. I have to find the cause just like you. I'm really no different, no one is. Encountering bugs is really a perfectly normal part of the process of building or learning literally anything. So if you want to see how I solve bugs in real time, if so, you can watch what happened on this live stream. Okay, what on earth is going on? <laughs> All right. So the first bug was a null reference exception. Now, usually this is a really easy to solve bug. I've got my four step process and it always works great. However, in this case, things were different. I had really no idea what was going on, supposedly because the bug was on this line of code, this one inside the undestroy system, except undestroy should not be called at all when I play the game, only when I exit. So the fact that this was causing the bug exactly when I press the play button, that was very strange. So I did exactly what I always do to solve the null reference exceptions. I added a bunch of logs to identify exactly what is null, but that did not work. For some weird, strange, inexplicable reason, the logs were not running. I added the logs right before the line that was shown in the stack trace, and nope, the logs did not run, but the null reference error that was still happening. That is extremely strange. Code runs from top to bottom, so before getting to that line, it has to go through the previous line, it has to print the logs, but it wasn't doing that. So all of it extremely strange, I really had no idea what was going on. You can see me trying all kinds of things on the live stream. And thankfully, Danny from the Unity Dots team, he was watching the stream and pointed out how the error might not necessarily be on that exact line of code. Basically, Dots does a ton of magic source generation in the background. And because of that, the stack trace might not point to the exact line where the error is actually throwing. I didn't know this. I obviously assumed that whatever line was throwing the error was actually the line that was throwing the error. But assuming that is not the case, I quickly looked at the lines around that line and I very quickly found the reason. No reference exception errors are extremely common errors, so I can very easily figure out what is causing it when I find one. Just by looking at the line, I knew exactly what was going on. Oh, is it maybe not like in this function at all? Could it? Wait. Ah. <laughs> okay, well, I just figured out what is the answer. It's exactly over here on this one. Previously in the live stream, I showed the debug visual for how the flow field pathfinding works. It shows all of the visual errors for the algorithm. It's all pretty fun. So anyways, I enabled that debug visual just to show it, and then I disabled it. And then over here on the dot grid system, over here, I'm accessing that debug visual in order to update it. But of course, if I disable the game object that actually shows the visual, if I do that, then the awake never runs, which means the singleton instance is left null. So that was really the issue. Super simple to solve, but in this case became really tricky to debug, specifically because dots apparently does not give you the exact line number in the stack trace all the time. Due to the whole source generation, it might give you a line that is different from the actual line causing the error. I didn't know that. I had no idea dots did that. I did know there was source generation, but I never considered how the line numbers might be different. So I did not know what was happening here, but that means that this bug was actually a really awesome thing. Anytime you encounter a bug, it's always a great chance to learn something new. So my advice is don't get frustrated when you find bugs. Take them as learning experiences. By solving them, you will know what to do next whenever you encounter that bug the next time. Run play. And there you go, it does work. <laughs> All right, so that was that was fun. Okay, that was uh, a good thing to, to find out. Then the second bug was even stranger, even hard to debug. So I had a system to make the zombies attack the HQ. However, only some entities should do that. If the entity, if the zombie has the random walking component, then that entity should really just randomly walk around the spawn point. It should not go towards the HQ. So I thought this was pretty simple to achieve. I just had the query with none for that component. And with that, the entities that have that component should not attack the HQ. However, that was not the case. They were still attacking the HQ. I had no idea why the query wasn't running correctly. I verified the code and everything was written correctly. It has the with none random walking, so it should work, but it didn't. I also verified by stopping the game and inspecting the entities manually. And yep, they did have the random walking component. So they had it, but they were also still being included in that query, even though that query had the with none. So that made really no sense. This one really confused me for quite a while. This is very strange. If the entities did have that component, why on earth were they being included in that query? Now, first I thought the issue was that I had two with none calls thinking maybe it had to be just one with the extra comma for each component. I thought that was the issue, but nope, that was not the case. Eventually I also added the log to check if it actually had that component, and it said that it didn't. So basically over here, the log is saying that it does not have the random walking component, but when inspecting the entities manually, I can see they do have that component. 
So this was all extremely odd. It took some time in exploring all of these scripts in order to finally figure out what was the reason. It was a weird ordering issue. Basically, when the units are spawned, it just spawns the unit prefab and that one does not have the random one component. That one is added manually afterwards because only some enemies will have that component. For example, the horde enemies, these are not supposed to have that component. So I was manually adding that component after spawning. However, adding components, that is what is considered to be a structural change. So you cannot do that inside a for each query. So for doing that, I was using an NT command buffer, specifically this one on the end simulation. And right here, this was indeed the issue. Basically, the unit was being spawned right here, spawned without that component, and then it was queued up to add the component, but that was only happening at the end of frame. So on the beginning of the frame, that enemy entity is being spawned, and at the end of frame, it is adding that component, but in between these two actions, that is when the attack system is actually running. And when that system ran, the entity did not indeed have the run one component attached, so it was telling the entity to attack the HQ, and only at the end of frame, only then was it actually adding the random walking component. So that was the issue all about the order of operations. After finding out that the solution becomes super simple, instead of queuing up the NT command buffer to run at the end of frame, instead of that, I just manually created one and ran it manually after the 4 each query. That way, when the attack HQ system runs, when that runs, the entity does have the random walk component and it does not go inside that query. So yet another very random, very strange bug. And again, yet another great reason for learning. The next time that I encounter such a strange issue like this one, next time I will remember to check the order of the operations. So like that, there you go. Logic does work. <laughs> so yeah, that was the issue. Okay. So basically with this video, I want you to always keep one thing in mind. Whenever you watch some kind of video tutorial on something, literally anything, when you do, the fact that the person presenting the tutorial is teaching everything correctly without any errors, that is not representative of what it took for them to learn. When you watch a video tutorial, you are watching the final presentation after all the learning, all the mistakes, all the trial and error. The final polished video does not include that part, but that part absolutely still happens to everyone. For example, when I eventually finish my dots course, which by the way, you can go sign up and I'll let you know when it's out. When I do finish it, you won't see me struggling with these issues because the final video is meant to teach you how to build everything the correct way. But as you can see here, I am going through these issues while building the original prototype. So when you yourself find bugs throughout your process of making games or making anything, if so, that is perfectly normal. That is something that happens to literally everyone. That's a perfectly normal part of the learning process. It just isn't shown in tutorials, but do know that it absolutely happens to everyone.